Hey, what's going on, everyone? Original Hypnotoad here, welcoming you to NBA Week 1. Uh, now, I'm actually going to be doing my team builder and my post commentary in the same video. So, if you guys want to go ahead and skip past this team builder, I'll go ahead and put an annotation on the screen right about now, uh, where you can just go ahead and click on that and go straight to the battle, uh, straight to the post commentary. But, uh, I just wanted to do this in one video, just to make it a little bit easier for me for editing wise and for uploading wise. I know I would have two potential videos, but I would just kind of want to just make it a little easier for me. And instead of having to edit and render and upload two videos, I could just do one. Uh, so this will be a little bit longer video, but I'll try to make it go by fast. So week one here, we are going up against the Dot Av Grand Bullies, coached by Jonah Rodriguez. Uh, I don't know if he has a YouTube or not, but if he does, I'll definitely link that down below. Uh, so definitely go check him out. Uh, his team is Starmy, Ente, Shaman, Kobalion, Deontay, Murkrow, Mega Beedrill, Electros, Sigalith, Zygarde, and Dugtrio. So looking at his team, he has a lot of potential threats. He has Ente, which could be banded or scarfed. He has Shaman, which can be annoying with natural uh, natural cure. Uh, Kobalion can set up with either uh, special or f physical. Uh, Mega Beedrill is uh, crazy fast and hit pretty hard. Uh, Murkrow is an only one because of Prankster. Uh, if you guys watched DBL Season 2, I had Murkrow and I love using Murkrow. Uh, Prankster T-Wave, Prankster Tailwind, uh, Sucker Punch, things like that. Really cool mon to use, so definitely have to be worried out for that. Uh, some of our potential mons, he has, this, like I said, Sturmy, which is one of the best rapid spinners in the game. Uh, Deontay, which is, uh, I haven't really had much time facing Deontay before. Uh, it's not Mega Deontay, so I know it's not as good. It's more defensive, I guess, uh, with base 150 and both defense and special defense. Uh, Electros, which has no weaknesses. Sigilyph, which, outside of the, uh, the Magic Guard, Psycho Shift, Calm, uh, Cosmic Power, uh, Stored Power set, I don't really know much about. Uh... Zygarde can either set up Dragon Dances or Coil and be bulky, and Dugtrio is just a good trapper. So, uh, with all that in mind, uh, the one thing I did notice is I noticed that a plus two uh, Mega Charizard X with Rocks Up would just wreck through this entire team. Uh, so that's why I heavily, and I mean heavily, built around Mega Charizard X, uh, and you'll kind of see that as we go along, but starting off here we do have Mega Charizard X uh, with Dragon Dance, Dragon Claw, Fire Punch, and Iron Tail with 252 attack, adamant, 56 in defense to take priority moves a little bit better, and 200 in speed. Now, uh, hold on, let me get my mouse again. So, 200 speed uh, at plus one, let me outspeed uh, Mega Beedrill, his fastest mon, and then at plus two, I'd be able to outspeed uh, his entire team. Uh, if they were, if any of them were scarfed, uh, and at plus two, uh, the combination of Dragon Claw, Fire Punch, and Iron Tail would one-shot everything on his team. Uh, Dragon Claw would one-shot things like Starmie, uh, the uh, Murkrow, Mega Beedrill, Electros, Sigilyph, Zygarde, Dugtrio. Fire Punch would uh, Fire Punch at plus one would take out the Shaman and the Cabalion. And the Mega Beedrill, obviously, because Mega Beedrill is so frail. And Iron Tail is just there for the Deontay to hit it for uh, quad effective damage. So the plan is uh, force my opponent to switch out, which you'll see here in a little bit later what that potentially means, or how I would go about doing that, and be able to set up a Dragon Dance for three. Uh, but that is our Charizard X. So moving on, we have Whimsicott, the Focus Sash holding Prankster, uh, Tailwind, Memento, U-Turn, and Taunt with 248 in HP, 252 in Defense, and 8 in Spadef. Uh, honestly, the EVs really did not matter to me because uh, this thing was really meant to do two things. To taunt potential rock setters, and to potentially set up a Tailwind, or just click Memento and make my opponent's opposing Mon be at minus 2, minus 2, and then switch in Mega Charizard X to get a plus one from Dragon Dance on the switch in. Uh, so that's basically all that Women's Cut is there to do. Moving on, we have Jirachi, 
Holding Choice Scarf with U-Turn, Stealth Rock, Healing Wish, and Iron Head with 252 in attack, 252 speed, jolly, and 4 in spadef. Uh, now this set, uh, I'm really going to try to bluff the Scarf. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, get up rocks uh, early in the game and then immediately switch out on if he switches into something that could take me out, like an Entei. Uh, or I could just U-Turn out and not reveal that I am Scarfed. Really this thing is meant to be a uh, check for the Deontay because it definitely one-shots Deontay with Iron Head. Uh, beyond that, it doesn't really have much use. Uh, Healing Wish is there to uh, potentially bring back my Charizard X at full HP. Uh, if I take a lot of damage in the game and I just want to get back at the full HP, I can go for Healing Wish and then that can also give me some switch initiative to set up a Dragon Dance. Uh, moving into our third mon, or fourth mon actually, we have Rona Mo holding Expert Belt with Volt Switch, HP Ice, Will O Wisp, and Hex with uh, Max Special Attack, Max Speed, Modest Nature. Now, uh, looking at his team, the only thing that the grass would hit for super effective would be Doug Trio and uh, Starmie, which Doug Trio would be hit by the HP Ice, and Starmie would be hit by the Volt Switch. So I didn't run Lee Storm uh, for that reason. I'm running will o -Wisp to potentially burn the Zygarde or the Kabalion. Uh, those are my two main things I want to try to burn in this game. And then Hex is there if I can potentially inflict a status on something. I could go for the Hex and do twice as much damage. So that's the step there. Uh, once again, Volt Switch for just Switch Initiative to hopefully bring in Mega Charizard X. Moving into our fifth mod, we have Spirit Tomb holding a cussed up battery with Infiltrator with Shadow Sneak, Destiny Bond, Memento, and Toxic, 248 uh, HP, 8 in attack, and 252 with uh, This set really is there for chip damage with Toxic and Shadow Sneak, and then if I can activate my cussed up battery, and here we go for Destiny Bond or Memento to once again get Switch Initiative or to take out a mod with Destiny Bond. Uh, as you guys see, my team is very, very heavily built around Megazard X. If Megazard X goes down, I really don't have offense. So uh, I just need to make sure I play really, really well with uh, Megazard X. Uh, and moving into our last mon, we have Cresselia holding leftovers with Thunder Wave, Lunar Dance, Psy Shock, and Toxic with 252 HP, 252 in defense, and 4 in speed death. Uh, basically, this Fang's goal is to throw some statuses on some mons, potentially Thunder Wave, the Ente, which could potentially be Scarfed, or throw a Toxic on something to get some chip damage, and then click Lunar Dance when I'm low to bring in Megazard X again at full HP. So that is the team. So uh, I'm going to just go ahead and pull up the battle because I actually have it right here. Uh, so looking, oh, let me go, I need to switch the teams real fast. So let me go ahead and just play this and switch sides and then pause. Okay, and reset. Okay, so looking at what he brought, he brought the Mega Beedrill, Starmie, Shaman, Entei, Deontay, and Murkrow. Well, I obviously know what I brought. Uh, looking at what he brought, so obviously we see Mega Beedrill is his fastest mod, barring any Scarfers. Uh, Starmie is most likely going to be running uh, the Rabbit Spin, is going to be. Rabbit Spin Starmie is his only form of hatch removal, unless he's running non uh, Prankster. Murkrow, because Murkrow could run Defog, but it can't run Prankster Defog. So I'm not really worried about Murkrow being a Defog user. Uh, so probably looking at Starmie, I'm guessing it's probably going to be either Sash or Life Orb, uh, just from the guess of it. Shaman is probably going to be a bulky set, because that's what it does well. It gets Leech Seed, uh, Seed Flare, probably Earth Power. Uh, and that fourth move, not quite sure what he could potentially bring. Ente, Ente would either be banded or scarfed in my opinion. I don't really think there'd be any other viable set against my team. Uh, actually, looking at the team I brought, scarfed actually does really good work because uh, it would one-shot both the uh, Rotom, the Whimsicott, and the uh, Jirachi with a Sacred Fire. It could also have the coverage to take out my Megazard X. Uh, Deontay is probably his... Is, is probably his well, it is his only rocks, potential rock setter. Uh, I really don't know what he could be running on the Deontay. And Murkrow is probably running the Life Orb uh, or Eviolite set with uh, Prankster and like T-Wave, Sucker Punch. Uh, I don't know what else. Uh, but anyways, 
looking at what he has, I figured I'd go ahead and just lead with Whimsicott, I believe is what I actually end up leading with. So let me go ahead and get that going. So he leads with Entei. I do lead with Whimsicott here. Now, I don't want to take any damage right away, so I'm just going to go ahead and make the hard switch out, I believe. I think I make the hard switch out into Spirit Tomb. Uh, he actually goes for Extreme Speed, which not really sure what he was expecting. Uh, figured he would go just for the straight up uh, Sacred Fire. I don't know if he was just predicting me to switch straight out into my Charizard to uh, take the Sacred Fire. But he goes for the Extreme Speed, so we get pretty lucky there, uh, and we are immune to it. And here he switches out, which kind of confirms to me he's either Scarfed or Bandit at this point. I mean, yes, he could go for... Uh, he could, you know, take me out with a Sacred Fire, I believe, in two hits. And I can't Will-O-Wisp him, so Spirit Tomb can't do much to him besides Toxic, I guess. Uh, so he does switch out, which kind of tells me that he is choice in some way. Uh, here he goes at the Shaman. I just threw the Toxic out. Uh, I just threw the Toxic out because I figured he's not going to stay in with the Entei. Uh, because I was thinking that he was either Scarfed or Banded. Uh, so I figured, okay, I'll just throw Toxic out. Only thing that he could bring in would be the Beedrill to absorb it. Shaman, will, Shaman and Starmie both have Natural Cure. So they could both just come in and take the uh, moves. But he can't switch out to Starmie because fearing the uh, Ghost or Dark type attack. So... So you can go out to this, I, uh, he switches out, switches right back out into Entei. I was switching out into Whimsicott here. Here I decide to go for the U-turn. Uh, I see I make him lock himself into Flare Blitz. Uh, he's going to take a lot of recoil. I go for the U-turn here. Take 7%. Uh, I switch out here into Cresselia. Uh, I just think I could just throw a T-Wave here. Yeah, I believe I throw a T-Wave here. Uh, so he goes into Deonsi. I switch out here into Drachi because Deontay can't touch me without Earth Power. He goes for the Toxic, so I make a pretty lucky guess, I guess, at that point. Uh, here I just go for the Stealth Rocks. Uh, and I'm figuring this thing has to have Earth Power if you switch to in. Something else he could do, so I just switch out into my Rotomo here. Uh, he goes for a Siege Flare here. I just go for the Volt Switch, predicting him to switch out, but he stays in and actually does a good amount of damage. Uh, but here at this moment, I figured, okay, he does not have rocks up at this point. I could just go out into Whimsicott and then click Memento and then get a free switch in into my Charizard. So that's what I'm going to do here. He happens to stay in. He's going to get minus two, minus two. He goes for the uh, Seed Flare to take me out, but it doesn't happen. I go for Charizard X. I just go for the uh, Dragon Dance. He goes for Leech Seed, so I know he's running max speed. Uh, so I get up to plus one. Here I could have killed it, but only pause it. Here I know I was going to kill with a plus one fire punch. But I figured he was going to switch out because I figured Earth Power wasn't going to be doing a lot to me. So I'm like, okay, I can get up to plus two. And unless he switches in the Murkrow, I can get a three kill against something. And I do go for the Dragon Dance. He stays in and goes for the Earth Power and does 45%. That's minus two. It's life orb, obviously, but still minus two is create or minus two doing forty five percent. I do just take it out with the fire punch. Uh, I have to go for it. Now here he goes to the Murkrow. He takes rock damage, and now uh, my mentality here was okay. This thing is gonna go for one of two moves. It's either gonna go for the sucker punch to take me out, or it's gonna go for the the thunder wave to paralyze me. So knowing that those are its two moves, potential moves. And I, knowing that I need to save Mega Charizard X uh, to go for a, uh, I need to bring him back in at full HP with uh, Jirachi or uh, Cresselia with their uh, healing moves. So I figured I have to switch out. I can't stay in here. I have to switch out. If he does go for one of those two moves, the one thing on my team that can take both would be Rotomo, which is what I go out to here. And as you see. He does, in fact, go for the Thunder Wave, so uh, I could have gone for an attack and just taken the Thunder Wave and taken out the Murkrow this turn, but the Sucker Punch, I just did not want to risk at all, so uh, I had to make the safe switch out into a Rotom Mo. Uh, here he goes for Tailwind. Uh, it's kind of surprised to see that. I go for the Volt Switch. I do take out the Murkrow, so no more Prankster Thunder Waves, so that's pretty nice. Uh, so here I know that if I can get my 
Charizard back up to plus two would be fine. Now here, I was expecting him just to go for the straight attack, uh, but he has to, I guess, protect because that's what Mega Beedrill does, is protect turn one. I go over to Destiny Bond, which is going to force him to either switch out or to not take me out, because if he takes me out, Mega Beedrill's gone. So knowing that, I can go for the Shadow Sneak, uh, get some good chip damage out of the way. Uh, I go for another Shadow Sneak here, as he just goes for the U-turn to take me out. Mega Beedrill can't come back in with the rocks up. But he does have uh, Starmie, which is what he switches out here into. Seeing him go out to that, I go up to Ronomo. I know he has to, he has to go for out of spin. That's his only thing he can do. I just go for the Volt Switch. I do take out the Starmie. Uh, and here, I believe, I just go right out into Jirachi. Uh, now here, I was thinking, okay. Actually, do I make the switch? I forget. No, I just go for the straight up Stealth Rocks. Uh... I figured, okay, the one thing I just need to do with the Jirachi is I just need to get rocks up. Because my plan was get rocks up, sack my uh, Jirachi here, then go out to Cresselia, uh, T Wave the Entei, Lunar Dance, go out to Zard X, and win from this point. Uh, so I just go for the Stealth Rocks because I need that, because that will take out the uh, Mega V Drill on Switch In. As he predicts me to switch out, probably into the uh, Megazard X and goes for Bulldoze, uh, I take that opportunity to switch out into Roto Mo because I know he's a uh, choice in some way. Uh, he switches out here into Mega B Drill, sacks it off. So he is left with Entei and uh, Mega Dancy. I just go for the Willis, I don't really know why I went for it. Uh, I wasn't going to do anything to anything on his team, but I just figured he had switch. Goes for the Sacred Fired right there. Uh, at this point, I go out to Cresselia. I go for the Psy Shock, I believe, here, predicting him the... No, I, I think I just go for the Psy Shock just to get chip damage, because Scarf, Jirachi could just come in and take out both Mons at this point. Uh, I just make the switch out here into Jirachi, because there's nothing he can do. He goes for Toxic, wouldn't have done anything, even if I didn't avoid it. Uh, and two Iron Head here is going to uh, take out the Deonce, and with Rocks up, it's going to take out the Entei, so... We do win our NBA battle uh, 3-0, so good game to uh, Jonah. Uh, once again, we had this battle really late at night. I think it was like 11.30 at night when we had this match. Uh, so I've been having a lot of night matches, but hey, I've been doing good in all of them, so I can't complain. So uh, we do start off the season 1-0 in the NBA, so that's really, really cool. Uh, looking back at my <laughs> prep, had I not... Had I not played with the Zard carefully like I did, I would have lost this match. Uh, only thing I would have had offensively besides... Only thing offensively I had besides the Mega Zard X was Expert Belt, Rotom Mo, and then Choice Scarf, Iron Head, Jirachi. And had it came come down to like my Jirachi going for Iron Heads, I wouldn't want that win. I just would not want that win. I would just... I think at that point I probably would have forfeited. Because I know it seems weird, but I really... I drafted Jirachi not for Serene Grace. I drafted it for its just multiple use move pool. Um, I know what you're think I've been what you're you guys are probably thinking like, oh, well, then why'd you bring Choice Scarf Jirachi? Well, I wanted to bring Choice Scarf Jirachi because uh, Choice Scarf, Stealth Rocks, you know, I could bluff that I was Scarfed. Uh, U-turn would have switched me out, and then getting that Choice Scarf, Healing Wish, into my Mega Zard would have been really good. And then Iron Head, I knew it was going to take out Deonce if he brought it, and it could just kind of whittle away his weaker Mons if I could get to that point, which is what actually happened. Uh, so I'm really glad that I didn't have to rely on Jirachi to get flinches, because I just would not want that. Uh, but anyways, I'm done rambling on, so once again, great game to Jonah. Uh, first time ever battling him, uh, hopefully not the last. Uh, hopefully we can meet each other again in the playoffs, because uh, in the NBA, uh, you battle each team one time, and then playoffs happen. So hopefully I do get to battle him again in playoffs. That'd be really awesome. Uh, really good battle. But that's going to be all for us, so make sure you hit the like button, show your support for your Detroit Magnetons, and I'll see you all in week two of the NBA. Bye-bye.